Late last year, Creation Science Evangelism, founded of course by the convicted fraudster Kent Hovind, engaged in a campaign of issuing false DMCAs to remove videos critical of them and Kent Hovind. The campaign was a notable failure with a large backlash and a significant portion of the flagged videos being reinstated under fair use. The Discovery Institute has evidently decided to follow in the footsteps of Creation Science Evangelism. The Discovery Institute is the hub of the intelligent design movement that refused to defend intelligent design under oath in court. They then proceeded to blame the US justice system when the judge ruled on the crushing weight of the evidence that intelligent design was not science, but little more than a relabeling of creationism. The lack of respect of the Discovery Institute for the US judicial system is highlighted by the high praise lauded by Discovery Institute fellow William Dembski on a flash animation in which Judge Jones is characterized as a talking doll who spews forth phrases when professional witnesses for the prosecution pull the drawstring of the doll, originally with flatulent sounds. It later turns out that the high-pitched voiceover were provided by none other than Discovery Institute fellow Dembski himself. Truly, the actions of the Discovery Institute fellows exude forth the level of maturity, integrity, and intellectual prowess of the intelligent design movement. In late November 2007, the Discovery Institute took down one of Extinct Dodo's videos critical analysis of the video Icons of Evolution with a DMCA copyright infringement notice. Extant Dodo has produced many edifying videos highlighting in an educational fashion the many shortcomings of intelligent design and creationism. In his recent video, Extant Dodo highlighted the intellectual dishonesty of the Discovery Institute in the video Icons of Evolution. In this case, the work of Extant Dodo was novel, educational, and contained significantly more and better researched information than the original video. It is therefore difficult to see why the Discovery Institute has flagged this video as infringing their copyright, as it would be covered under both fair use and non-profit educational purposes. Further, the hypocrisy of the Discovery Institute should be highlighted and that it was only late in 2007 that the Discovery Institute fellow William Dembski was caught on camera using the Harvard video, The Inner Life of the Cell, without permission. Harvard had refused permission to let the Discovery Institute use the video. Dembski then played dumb, claiming on his blog that he just found it online, with the credits curiously missing, and then added his own audio in the hope that plausible deniability would solve all of his problems. Unfortunately, Dembski had earlier that year written a book, in which it was evident that Dembski knew the origin of the video at least six months before he used it without permission. Dembski has claimed on his blogs that the credits were still on his video. Regrettably, this is simply at variance with reality. This is the start and end of the Harvard video. While red blood cells are carried away at high velocity by a strong blood flow, leukocytes roll slowly on endothelial cells. Rolling, activation, adhesion, and transendothelial migration are the four steps of a process called leukocyte extravasation. This is the start and end of the Dembski video. Watch a little video, which as it were, this is, this is state-of-the-art uh, computer animation of what's inside the cell. And uh, so just watch and enjoy. This is the story of a white blood cell that finds an infection and goes through the combination of change where they get active of uh, matrix dissolves and it allows to slither into the region where it needs to eat up the bacteria or the infection. So this is what needs to be explained. Would you like to see it again, Dembski? Extant Dodo extensively added to the Discovery Institute's work. It was educational and Extant Dodo in no way profited from this work. 
Dembski, on the other hand, gets paid for his lectures and used Harvard's work wholesale and in an unaccredited fashion in an attempt to lend credibility to a debunked idea which Dembski makes money on from book sales. So why is this of interest to anyone? Well, I make fair use of the misleading material of the Discovery Institute and expose it in a scientifically competent fashion. If the Discovery Institute see fit to flag these videos with false DMCAs, my first response will be to contact Pepper Hamilton. Pepper Hamilton was the law firm responsible for the humiliating drubbing intelligent design received in court. This was the court case in which three of the members of the Discovery Institute, the hub of the intelligent design movement, decided it would be best for them not to attend. There, Pepper Hamilton had no direct legal connection with the Discovery Institute. However, in the event that the Discovery Institute decide they wish to walk the same ruinous path of false DMCAs as a form of backdoor censorship previously trodden by creation science evangelism, I will be happy to offer Pepper Hamilton the option to engage directly with the Discovery Institute and would joyously engage with a smile on my face and a tune in my heart to ensure that the inevitable humiliating defeat of the Discovery Institute in court is seen by the widest audience possible. I will also be happy to add this to the compendious list of courtroom defeats of creationism, intelligent design and the Discovery Institute.